to you on Facebook. Good morning to you on Instagram. Tanja here, Peak Performance Specialist for Real Estate and Property Professionals, coming to you live for Mindset Mastery Monday, the holistic home. Boom. First cab off the rank. Look at you. Erin, good morning. How are you? Uh, great to have you here. Thank you for tuning in. What is Mindset Mastery Monday? Hey, Fran, great to have you tune in as well. <clears throat> uh, oh, love eyes. Thanks, Erin. What is Mindset Mastery Monday? It's where I, as a peak performance specialist, as an NLP practitioner and trainer, as a coach that helps people achieve their goals in the least amount of time, I just come in. G'day, Steph. How are you? Gorgeous. And I share content to help help you get access to living a life you love now, fulfilling your potential now. So first of all, how was your weekend? Did you have a good one? Uh, hello to those that have joined on Facebook. I can't see who you are yet, but I know that will happen. That will come. I have faith. Uh, it is um, Lloyd. G'day, Lloyd. How are you? Now, this session today, first of all, I was going to ask you, how are you? R type in, oh, relaxing. Nice. Your weekend was relaxing. Very good. How are you feeling? One word to describe how you're feeling right now in this moment. Uh, how am I feeling? Uh, to be honest, I'm a little bit tired. I've had three or four hours sleep. Uh, I just was uh, up putting flat pack furniture <laughs> together and then I was vibed. So it took me a while to get to sleep. So I'm a little bit tired, but I actually feel really excited. Like I can't get the smile off my face. I had an unbelievable transformational uh, weekend. Fantabulous is Lloyd. Loving your videos, Lloyd. Nice work. Saw you video down on the marina, my old stomping ground in Safety Beach <clears throat> on the weekend. Uh, so yeah, I'm feeling really excited. Amazing transformational uh, weekend for me. Uh, you can watch the story on Instagram or Facebook, but just really connected back to the essence of me, which, hey, Susan, great to have you here, is um, a little bit about what I want to talk about today. Today is really for those that <clears throat> are really interested in getting access to manifesting that which you desire, that which you want in the least amount of time. So if you would like access to achieving your goals and dreams in the least amount of time, can you type in yes, if that's you? Uh, and I'll, I'll hopefully have everyone on Facebook loaded up shortly. So would you like access to really manifest your hopes and dreams and goals and desires in the least amount of time? What I'm going to share with you today is insight, tools and resources to give you access to that whilst also elevating your intuitive intelligence. Yes, yes, yes. Unreal. Now, if you're driving, keep listening and then maybe do this exercise again later. The holistic home is yes, of course. Uh, if you've got a pen and paper handy, I really would love you to get it out so you can we can interact. And please, let's make this as interactive as possible because I want to I want to actually give as many of you or all of you actually as much access to fulfill this intention as possible. So. The, oh, yay. Facebook's loaded up. Lou, g'day. Fiona, g'day. <clears throat> Joanne, how are you, my love? Mickey, by the way, if you're watching this live, do me a flavor, type in live. If you are watching the record, please type in record, just so I know when you're tuning in. <clears throat> All right. So how can we increase our intuitive intelligence? How can we uh, elevate access to um, achieve our goals, dreams, hopes, and desires in the least amount of time? Live. I'm glad you're live, Amy. The first thing I want to share with you is consider there are two orientations that we can be in, two modes of apparatus, two places to create from. A, there is our soul. This is our true nature and purpose. This is who we came here to be. In here we have unlimited potential and we are created that just goes directly for what we want, like just directly for it. That's our soul. <clears throat> Then at the second orientation is our ego. Hey, who have we got? Smiling, smiling. Duh. Hi, smiling. Where are you tuning in from? Uh, then we have our ego and our ego is our limited thoughts and beliefs, judgments, opinions, and assessments of ourself. It is our identity. It is our personality. It is the create the character that we created to operate on top of wounds that happened to us as a child, whether, you know, you didn't get love or acknowledgement from your parents. If you were bullied at school, it like just, if trauma happened, 
things happen to us in our life and then we make decisions about who we are and here's the decision that all of us have made at some age typically it's around the age of two we all made a decision that we're not good enough to a degree and so if the <clears throat> if the orientation of the ego is here our agenda is just to purely create and go directly for what we love then the orientation and agenda of the ego is to seek validation to make everything okay to have people like us and have all the conditions and reality in check before we go for what we love does this make sense so our creator our soul our true self just goes directly for it our ego who doesn't feel good enough and whose agenda is I've got, I've got to go seek validation. I've got to have all the qualifications, I've got to have the right body, have the right thing, have the right man, have the right woman, have the right job, have the right this, have the right that. Yes, makes sense. Awesome, Amy. We've got to have all the conditions right first. So we get very addicted to doing what do I need to do to have the body, have the man, have the woman, have the car, have the house, have the money, have the qualifications, have that lined up. <sighs> then I can go for what I love. <clears throat> so I'm gonna, we're going to unpack this a little bit more. I hope this is making sense. I'd love you to interact, especially on Facebook, if you've got questions along the way. So let's make this as interactive as possible. Hey, Andrew, happy birthday, my friend. Happy birthday. I hope you're having a beautiful day so far. You're joining us. Happy birthday. Let's say happy birthday to Andrew and happy fatherhood. I hope you're enjoying that too, my friend. I'd like to make this as interactive as possible. So please, I'd like each of you to tune in right now. What is something that you would really love and type it in, type it in on Facebook, please don't be shy. Like seize this for you. You know what successful people do? They pull the future towards themselves. They don't give a crap what people think of them. They engage and interact. Oh, hey, Andrew, Amy on Instagram says, happy birthday, my friend. <clears throat> you got some love coming your way. So think about what is something that you would love. It can be personal. It can prof be professional. It can be health. It can be anything you desire. What is something that you would love to manifest? Andrew says, thank you. <clears throat> Good on you, Amy. Nice work. Uh, so type it in. What is something you would love? Now, I got a message just before I went live. Someone wrote in, um, I don't even know what I'd love. So you could be in that place too. But just write down something that you would love, A. Eh? And B, if you don't know what you'd love, then I'd ask you, when you're doing a particular thing that brings you unbelievable joy, makes you feel happy, and you would be do, you would do it even if you didn't get paid or time just stands still and the world stops and disappears, what would that be? So type something in. What would you love? What would you love? Would you love more money? Would you love greater health? Would you love a great relationship? Would you love an awesome body? Would you love an, a great holiday? What would you love? So the key here into manifesting that which you desire, and I'm waiting to hear what you'd love, but don't be shy about that. You know, this could be part of the issue. Either you don't know what you'd love or B, you don't declare it. The universe is like a cosmic kitchen. Every single thought that you have is ordering from the menu of life and the kitchen gets the docket and we're either manifesting from our soul what we'd love, sending direct messages of, I'd love a, a holiday in Italy. I would love an unlimited shopping spree. I'd love a man with all these qualities. I'd love a woman with all these qualities. I'd love a man and a woman with, I don't care. What would you love? Hey, Brooklyn, great to have you here. I'd love to volunteer at a hospital. Oh, wow. Holistic home is shmoney. She'd love the shmoney, some dollar signs there. Um, what would you love? You guys on Facebook, Instagram's winning. They're more interactive. What would you love? So in our soul, we just send out signals, send out dockets to the cosmic kitchen of life of what we love. In our ego, we're sending out our fears and concerns and thoughts and beliefs about what we need in place before we can have what we love or whether we deserve it or whether we can have it. So first of all, what would you love? And second of all, notice when you get clear about what you'd love, whether you've shared it or not, I want you to ask yourself, what do I believe about manifesting that? Hey, Richard, great to have you here. We're looking at how we can increase our intuitive intelligence and achieve what we'd love in the least amount of time. That's what we're exploring. So welcome. <clears throat> Paula, I was just thinking about you before. Good morning, my love. So when you're clear about what you'd love, whether it's love, money, a holiday, an experience, a pay rise, a passion, a 
you know, whatever it is. I want you to then notice, oh, okay, Andrew, good on Andrew. He's written, I'd love to have enough so I can give back. Is that enough money? Is that like, like you're sending a thought to the universe. I'd love to have enough so I can give back enough energy, enough love, enough uh, humor, enough what? Every thought we have, every word we speak is sending, is ordering a menu from the cosmic kitchen and the chefs up there are going, awesome, Andrew, what would you love? And Andrew's like, I'd love enough so I can give back to people. Enough what? Enough air, right? So be clear about what you want. Amy's written, I would love to get my new business profitable and be able to share everyone Kelly Smith good morning my love um, start asking yourself how can I nice nice uh, Lloyd so here's what I want to offer you get clear about what you'd love then I want you to notice what comes up for you what are your automatic opinions beliefs judgments assessments and uh, you know like considerations or conditions that you believe need to be in place before you can go for it before you can manifest it before you can have it and before you can receive it do you think you need to have a perfect body to attract a mate do you think you need to have <clears throat> you know enough money in the bank before you go and do x what are the conditions and beliefs notice those and notice your beliefs and conditions will help you determine which orientation you're in. If you've got a whole stack of judgments and opinions of beliefs of what needs to be in place before you can have it, you bet you're in your ego. You're in your limited belief orientation that thinks that there's all these things that have to happen. When we're here, we are addicted to doing. What do I need to do to have the things that I'd love? So life becomes about being a doing, human doing. What do I need to do to have the man, have the woman, have the body, have the car, have the bank balance, have the conditions, have all this in place? <sighs> then I can have what I want and then I can be happy. <clears throat> the true art of being a creator is about who you're being. Who are you being? Now, most of us, A, aren't clear about what we'd love. Andrew's now clear, time and money. Did you get that little lesson though, Andrew? I made, maybe you were just thinking and typing too quick, but it's a nice little example of are you clear? Are you specific? Are you certain about what you'd love? And are you asking for it? And are you broadcasting it out? Because my friends, everything is energy. So when we're in our soul orientation, we're just really clear about what we'd love. And here's what masterful creators do. They don't worry about what they need to do. They don't worry about what conditions need to be in place. They don't have to shift their belief system. They just act as if. They have a belief system that that which they desire, if it came into their consciousness, actually already exists somewhere in the universe. They act as if, they act as if, that's the homework, act as if it already exists. Don't focus on what you need to do. Don't even ask, what do you need to do? That'll activate your ego. That'll have your ego go to your subconscious mind, which goes through the filing cabinet of the past. It sources um, activity based on what you already know. How do I get that? Well, what do I know? What do I need to do? What actions do I need to take to have that? True creators create from the future that doesn't even exist yet or hasn't even manifested yet. Is this making sense, right? And it, you know, for some people, it might sound a bit spiritual woo-woo, but I'm going to give you an exa a real-life example. I've done this many times, and I've got a great story from uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza, who's a, a, a teacher of quantum physics, who has got a great story about this. So when you're in your soul orientation, you just focus on what you'd love. You act as if it's happening now, and you um, you activate your frequency or your energy to be that of gratitude for it's coming to you and then you be patient which is the hard part so you you act as if it's now and you think about that thing present now coming to you now and you activate your gratitude for him or her or the money or the time or the business success coming to you good morning jane how are you my love please let me know is this making sense is this making sense kelly says good morning chrissy hey good morning to you <clears throat> so, Michael Lynchke, happy birthday to you, my friend. How are you? We've got birthdays going on all over the place. Good morning. Hey, Sev, how are you? Gorgeous, gorgeous. Can you see my energy shift as soon as I connect with him? Like, hmm, Sevalicious. Okay, so act as if it's already there. Your only responsibility in, in the creator of your existence is 
to send an attitude of gratitude for that which is already coming to you. And you just keep doing that until it manifests. Now, most of us don't operate here because most of us are stuck in the belief that we're not good enough and we seek validation and we have to have all the conditions in place. Do you know how many people are extremely qualified at having what they love? They've got all the honours and this qualification, that certification, because they are fulfilling a void to then fulfill the belief of when I have this, then I can have what I'd love. Make sense? Is this making sense? G'day, Brendan. How are you, champ? Let me know if this is making sense, guys. Otherwise, I'll, I'll, I'll also simplify it. So let me give you an example of this. Dr. Joe Dispenza, one of my mentors, he teaches the art of quantum physics and manifesting that which you desire, is running unbelievable training programs and retreats all around the world that is having people become super conscious, masterful creators, living lives they love in the least amount of time. He teaches the distinctions of creative mastery. Thank you, Amy. I love that you're always my little sound check, <clears throat> tuning in, letting me know it's making sense to you at least. That's great. Melissa Turner, loving attitude of gratitude, making total sense. Good morning, Melissa. Great to have you here. So Dr. Joe Dispenza teaches these distinctions. By the way, if you don't follow him, please follow him. If you're interested in becoming the creator of your destiny, if you're interested in living a magical goosebump covered, oh my God, somebody slap me, my life is amazing kind of life, watch him, watch his work, listen to his meditations and uh, go to his retreat. I'll be going in July in Surface Paradise in 2020. People literally are wheeling in wheelchairs with chronic MS and Parkinson's disease and tumors and are ditching the cane and ditching the wheelchair and walking because they are having an entire cellular upgrade. Anyway, he teaches, and I don't want to say anyway, like a big deal anyway, move on. But anyway, I want to continue, but please check him out. Okay, so... <clears throat> He teaches his children the art of manifesting. And uh, I think one of his daughters, he spoke to her on the phone. He said, hey, honey, what are you manifesting in the universe right now? Like, what are the games that you're playing? It's the kind of conversations that they had. And she said, oh, dad, I'm working on something really fun. And he's like, what is it? And she said, I want an unlimited shopping spree. I'm like, hell to the yes, I want one of those too. He's like, he laughs. He's like, ha, ha. She's like, yep, awesome. And they were chatting about something else and that was it couple of months later, they're catching up again. I don't know if it was over the phone or in person. And she said, hey, dad, guess what? And he said, what? She goes, you know that unlimited shopping spree? He said, yeah. She goes, it just happened. He goes, tell me about it. And he's all excited, acting as if, like it always happens. <coughs> Pardon me. She said, my girlfriend and I were at this massive department store, just shopping. Now, here's the thing. When you're manifesting, you're not like... <clears throat> I want this thing, I want this thing, I want this thing, I want this thing, I really can't wait till it's coming, it's coming to me, I have an attitude of gratitude, it's coming to me. Like this is called attachment, right? You don't act like this. You get clear about what you want, you, send, you order it from the cosmic kitchen as in, here's what I'd love. And all you need to do is elevate the attitude of gratitude and have a frequency of it, it is already coming to you because the universe heard you. And all you need to do is send that signal for 68 seconds today and it's like an old fashioned fax machine, boom, message received and it's already working in your favor if you consistently show up and have that attitude of gratitude until it arrives. If you're like, I want a man, <clears throat> And an hour later, you're like, where is he? <laughs> Good luck. That's not going to happen. Things only come to you when you are an energetic attraction um, match for it. You can't desire more money if you haven't elevated your sense of personal wealth. I'm going to say that one again because I know many of you want more money. Hey, pictures by Pauline. You can't desire more money. Sorry, you cannot manifest more money unless you elevate your level of value of yourself because your frequency will not be a match to that which you desire. You cannot desire manifest love if you're not loving yourself. Get it? You cannot manifest an amazing experience if you don't relate to yourself as amazing experience and life is already an amazing experience. If you are stuck in your ego waiting for all the conditions to show up and then you'll be happy and fulfilled, you won't manifest them. It, you have to elicit the state, the frequency, the energy, the vibration, the essence of that which you desire keep broadcasting the signals, keep sending the dockets to the cosmic kitchen, keep acting as if, and boom, what happens? Now, as, 
Uh, hey, Marie, great to have you tuning in, my love. We're talking about how do you become a masterful manifester? How do you uh, elevate your intuitive intelligence? Is this still making sense? Let me know. Please, guys, on Facebook, let me know. What would you love? What would you love? So... Dr. Joe Dispenza's daughter, she said, here's what happened. My girlfriend and I were in a shopping center. She had forgotten about this. She, you know, she'd made the order. She'd elevated her state of gratitude. She was acting as if, but it wasn't like she wasn't attached. Where's my man? Where's my man? Where's my money? Where's my shopping spree, right? Just detached. Let it go. Intentional, but unattached. Intentional, but unattached. And then she said, whilst we're in this department store, this man came up. Hey, Josh, how are you? This man came up and said, hi, I don't know what the friend's, I don't know what the daughter's name, I don't know what her friend's name. Let's say the friend's name is Joanne. He's like, hey, is your name Joanne? And she's like, yes. And he says, Joanne, my name is Paul. Uh, I'm a friend of your father's. Your father has helped me immensely. So Joanne's dad was a business coach and helped this man, Paul, uh, grow his business exponentially. And he said to Joanne, jo uh, the Dr. Joe Dispenza's daughter's friend, confused, uh, I've, all, I've been thinking about a way that I can repay your father because he's absolutely changed my life. And uh, I think I've found a way and ladies stay here. He goes away for five minutes. They're like, oh, what's happening? Hey, Kay, great to have you here. Love the Cosmic Kitchen. I love the Cosmic Kitchen too, Kelly. I think that should be something because that's actually how it works. It's a Cosmic Kitchen. Every thought, every word we speak is ordering something from the universe. So pay attention. Be careful what you think and say for you are listening. Are you eating like food you're allergic to? right? That's going to give you an anaphylactic response? Or are you eating like high vibrational food that's going to just explode your taste buds and have you expand and live a life you love? Think about it. Everything is a docket. They're cooking it, delivering it to you. When you have a thought or you um, talk about something that you want in a way that is counterintuitive to what you actually want, the universe doesn't go, hang on a second, Lloyd, you actually don't want that. Paula, you, you know, you don't actually want that. It just goes, okay, I'm here to serve. I'm just going to deliver you what you're asking for. And if what you want is not showing up, it's because you are not a frequency, vibrational, energetic gratitude match for that which you desire. Make sense? It's just not happening yet. So I hope this gives you access. So the man came back <clears throat> and gave the girls a company credit card and said, one way I believe I can repay you is have a shopping spree on me. There's no limit. Knock yourselves out. And so Dr. Joe Dispenza's daughter is telling him this and he's laughing because, of course, that's what she wanted. But here's what masterful creators do. They don't get attached to how it has to happen. They just keep broadcasting. They just keep ordering the, from the cosmic kitchen of life and they trust and have faith. And you know, my friends, if you're like me, this has been the hardest part. Having faith, having faith and having patience that that which you desire is coming to you. But all you need to do is stay conscious, super conscious, in fact, of the dockets you're sending, of the quality of your thoughts. So that's a little story about how easy it can happen. And that happened in a couple of months. Could you imagine, honestly, can you imagine saying to someone, I'm, I'm currently manifesting an unlimited shopping spree as a bit of fun. And a couple of months later, you're in a department store with a girlfriend, a man comes up and hands you a credit card and says, no limits, go for it. Do you reckon you'd have a pretty phenomenal experience of yourself as the creator and manifester of your own reality? <laughs> Like, what do you think? So I'm interested. What are you hearing for yourselves inside of this story about becoming a masterful manifester? And now I want to give you a strategy on how you can do this yourself. Number one, notice which, first of all, you've got to know you're in, you have two orientations. There's your soul. This is your creator, unlimited potential here. We just go directly for what we love. What does that mean? If you have a desire, you just make the call. If you want something, you take an action. You're not focused on what, what do I need to do? It's like, what action could I take that's consistent? I'm going to give you an intuitive step-by-step -step process that will elevate your intuitive ability to take the action, which is the path of least resistance. So 
In here, you're the creator. You go directly for what you love. You don't need any conditions in place. You act as if. High, high faith. In our ego, it's high fear. We believe we have to have all of these things in place. We seek validation, overcompensate for not being good enough, work really hard, focus on what we need to do, and then we get attached, and then we lose faith, and then it becomes really hard. Does that sound familiar to you? Have you ever operated like that yourself? So <clears throat> there's two orientations. Notice which one you're in. Notice when you're asking for what you love, whether some beliefs or conditions, judgments, opinions elicit and uh, surface. Just notice them and then get your orientation into your creator by just noticing the thoughts and going, oh, look at those beliefs. Okay, cool. And what would I love? And that's all you need to do. Put your hand on your heart, have your feet firmly on the ground. I like to close my eyes and I just ask, what would I love? Not what am I afraid of and what do I need to do? Because that's really limited. I just go, what would I love? I'd love this. Okay, great. And how does that feel? And then I imagine that I have it and I connect to the feeling state of having it and I hang out in that state for a while and it makes me electric and it electrifies and amplifies and powers the feeling and the vision. And I do that for 68 seconds. And if you want to know more about the 68 seconds, Google um, Abraham Hicks or Esther Hicks 68 seconds or on um, uh, YouTube and watch the videos. You'll, you'll see what I mean. Um, love the Cosmic Kitchen. We've read that. Kelly Smith sure have. Awesome. That is unreal. How about my friends on Facebook? You're a little quiet. Is this making sense? Let me know. And how's the reception today too? Is it any better? Because I did have a conversation with a couple of conversations with Telstra last week. All right. How do we amplify ourselves as predominant creative force of our own life, uh, not ob obstructed by our beliefs? We do this. First of all, if you, you got to park the funk. If you've got pen and paper, I invite you to write these steps down. Actually, do me a favor. Someone on Instagram, type these up for everybody. And someone on Facebook, if you'd be so generous, uh, if you can type these steps up so it's in the thread because I don't want to type as I'm communicating with you, that would be amazing. So someone choose in the cosmic kitchen, who's the chef of the keyboard? So to elevate your intuitive intelligence, to elevate your frequency, to attract love, more money, more experiences, unlimited shopping sprees, here's what I invite you to do. Number one, park your funk. What do you do to park your funk? You first of all, so number one, park your funk, which has six steps. A, unpack what you're thinking. What are you thinking right now? Unpack all your thoughts about everything in that moment. Park, unpack your thoughts. Hey, Elijah. Thanks for tuning in. B, unpack how you feel. So it might be, what am I thinking? I'm thinking I'm going to finish this flat pack after this video. I'm thinking I'm pretty hungry. I'm thinking I've got a few proposals to get out to. Like, what's on my mind? Then I unpack, what am I feeling? How do I feel? I feel hungry. I feel inspired. I feel really excited. I feel a little overwhelmed by everything I have to get done, but I know I'll get it done. And it doesn't matter what it is. It's your stuff. You unpack. B, what you are feeling. C, you unpack uh, how your body feels. How's my body feel? Is there anywhere that feels tense or tight? What we're doing here is we're quietening the subconscious so you can step quietly into the creator and then manifest that which you desire. So we park the funk. A, what am I thinking? B, what are, how do I feel? C, how's my body? You're playing hide and seek with any physical pain, injury or suffering and let it go. And then we start to tune ourselves to be, step into our intuition. Then we go D. You say to yourself or out loud, I choose to be of service. And in that declaration, you're choosing to be of service to your higher self. You're choosing to be of service to your dreams, hopes and aspirations. You're choosing to be of service to that which you desire. You're choosing to be of service to your soul. Does that make sense? Then E. I choose to receive and this is where people get tripped up. This is where people get in their own way because we want things, but I promise you as a coach and this experience for myself, many of us, because we have a fundamental belief, we're not good enough. We are not in the frequency that we deserve to receive. We need to give ourselves permission to receive that which we desire. I promise you, if you don't have the things that you desire in your soul, in your heart, in your life, in your world, 
you may be sabotaging it because you don't think you're you don't think you're worthy you don't think you should even receive it that could be the biggest lesson for many of you watching this have you ever been like me and wondered whether you deserve to have what you want or have you been practicing faith and you're like hell to the yes i absolutely deserve to have everything that i desire that's my birthright that's why i came here that's why i was incarnated on planet earth to be a spirit having a human experience going cool what can i create let's create a company called apple let's let's you know Let's build hospitals and help people heal. Let's create medicine. Let's create movies. Like you have unbelievable ideas and goals and dreams inside of you. That is the cosmic work trying to be birthed through you. Who are you to think that you're not enough to be to manifest that which you love? We got to get out of our way. Kelly says, Kelly, bless you, sister, for typing it up. No one's typed it up on Facebook if I hope someone does. Park your funk. A, unpack what you're thinking. What are you thinking? B, unpack how you feel. C, unpack how your body feels physically. D, start attuning yourself to your creator alignment, which is um, a, saying out loud, I choose to, re, uh, I choose to be of service and you're choosing to be of service to your soul. I choose to receive. I ch and that one, that's where people get stuck as I went, oh, you fired up before. And you're saying to yourself here, I choose to receive that which I desire. I choose to receive intuitive insights around what action I can take. I know Lloyd, you beautifully wrote before, ask what you need to do. You're close from a masterful creator manifestation kind of space. We don't want to focus on what do I need to do because it activates human doing. There is a similar question to ask, which is after you've asked, you know, I choose to receive. The third piece is, this is how to disengage your ego. You say, which is F, uh, Kelly, I think. Uh, I choose to let go of the need to know and the need to get it right. That's the fastest way to activate our ego. Our ego has to know when is he coming? When's the job coming? When is this house? When am I getting a listing? Like it has to know and it has to get everything right. So we just are over here trying to get everything right, all the conditions right, get all of our beliefs lined up, get all the certification, get all the qualifications, get everything right. And then guess what? That dream has gone on to somebody else. There is an amazing video by Alyssa, um, Elizabeth Gilbert, who's the author of Eat, Pray, Love, which is that amazing book that got turned into a world famous film starring Julia Roberts. And it's called, I uh, can't remember the full title, but if you Google something like Elizabeth Gilder, Gilbert, um, Natural Genius, it's an amazing TED Talk. Goosebumps just talking about it. She talks about being a creative and how intuitive ideas and dreams and hopes, Lloyd, you know what I'm talking about here come and it's like a dragon's tail you got to catch it and sometimes you got to say to the universe hang on I'm driving the car I can't write this idea yet just wait <laughs> so the universe is looking for human beings to manifest miracles to make wonderful things happen so when you get intuitive hunches when you get ideas when you get inspired when you have things happen that is the dragon's tail trying to find you to say, you, you're it. We want you to bring this to life. Come on, Sevki. Go, write, speak, get on stage, whatever it is. Come on, Kelly, do that. Thank you. I manifested you to help me type this stuff up. But that's what we're here for. So that's the steps to um, activate your intuitive intelligence. And then you just need to hand on heart, what would you love? and start ordering the dockets and start having an attitude of gratitude and act as if it's happening now, really. Now, the other thing you can do, and I'm going to teach more of this, uh, next year I'm going to open up a, um, a mastermind group, which is a 12-month private coaching group. For those that don't want to do one-on-one -on -one coaching but want monthly training and insights and a, a much more affordable price of one-on-one -on -one coaching, that is happening in 2020. And a lot of the focus is on intuitive intelligence. Um, so it's about the spirit of real estate success and how to turn, how to bring consciousness to this commission-based business. It's something I'm really big on. I've been quiet about. Hey, Amal. Hey, Karen. I hope this is making sense. Just be did for. Um, hello, how are you? And AV, oh, Angela. Hey, Angela, great to have you here. Now, uh, what was the other thing I was going to tell you about manifesting? Oh, yes. Now, once you've done those steps, okay, once you've done those steps, here's what you can do. When you're in that meditative state, 
you can create like what's the vision so the thing that you desire if you were to draw a circle like a hula hoop on the ground and stand in it with your hand on your heart and really connect with the vision what is the vision of this thing that you'd really love but you've got to do those steps first otherwise you'll be creating from your ego you have got to get out of your ego give up the need to know give up the need to get it right draw uh, an imaginary hula hoop or a like a golden ring it's got a high vibration you stand in the middle and you go cool what would i love and you imagine the vision of that the man the money the holiday the shopping spree the experience the volunteering the the school you want to build whatever it is performing on stage you imagine it you let your imagination really paint by numbers really color it in you, in other words you make it up Everything is made up. Don't ever underestimate your imagination. Your imagination is the landscape of your heart. It is the painter. It is the artist of the heartscape of your soul. Your intuition and your imagination is your Steven Spielberg of the movie of the masterpiece of your life. And But we just get so addicted to doing, we're not being creators. Um, good morning, Amala. Um, thank you for wishing me a good morning. So you connect to the vision. That's, that's that next piece once you've done all those steps at Kelly typed in then you step out of that then you draw a circle that says current reality and my identity's relationship to my vision so what's the current reality meaning what is your current relationship to love what is your current relationship to money what is your current identity and ego beliefs about the, the life that you want to have and you stand there and you notice what's obvious it'll be a heavy energy and these are all your limiting beliefs this is how you're unconsciously sabotaging yourself does this make sense Okay, like this is the work that I do with my clients. We just get clear. What are the subconscious beliefs that are sabotaging you manifesting that which you desire? I acknowledge this is a bit of a longer video today. I'm, I'm wrapping up shortly, but I, I want to give you this process because I want you to achieve what you want in the least amount of time. Hey, just two, D, four. I feel you too, global absolutely dream big dream big you're big you are like one in 14 trillion chance of even being manifested and we act like we're not good enough yet we're souls in like atoms like joined in individual floating on a rock in space and we think we're not good enough and we're wondering when the man's coming and when the money's coming we got to get into our heart we have to get into our creator we have to be clear about how are we sabotaging ourselves so when you step into that um, current reality what's my current reality and my identity's relationship with this notice how heavy it is notice your intuition will tell you you will get the answers as to why you are um, sabotaging your success so you'll get that download you'll get that information and then you step out of here and this is the key and Lloyd if you're still on this will be the thing that will turn the doing into action the net the final circle that you draw is like it's called the bridge when you step into the bridge, you step back into the vision. You're back in that beautiful, juicy relationship. You're back in that pay rise. You're back in that trip to Italy watching Sting play live. That's something I'm manifesting, right? You're back in that thing that your heart desires, that book, that book launch, that world tour, that sold out concert, that cooking book. I don't care. That family, that child, whatever it is, you're back there and you're looking at the current reality and your ego's relationship with what you want like it's a faraway island and you're asking yourself what action did I take to go from being over there to having my dreams fulfilled what's the bridge and you just patiently wait and the answer will come the answer may be random the answer may be obscure but I promise you the answer will come. And if it's not coming, it just means your ego is trying to get it right. It's a practice. So you got to park the funk. you got to notice your thinking, feeling, and emotion and, and physical state. You have to declare, I choose to be of service to your higher self and your dreams. I choose to receive insights and, and, and imagination and and information about how I can really make that happen and I choose to let go of the need to know and the need to get it right being attached to the outcome we desire and wanting it is actually you know not going to make it happen we have to just have faith we have to be George Michael 
and we just have to be acting as if it's happening. Our shopping spree is coming to us and on a consistent basis, wake up and be grateful for the man that is on his way to you, for the, you know, the child that is coming to you, for the business that is on its way to you. I have clients that literally their prospecting has just, they don't need to. The phone is ringing. The people are just walking into the office. Their emails are getting full because what they're visualizing, what they're broadcasting, the dockets they are sending uh, is that. They literally are like a drone. I've got one guy that's imagining that he's um, standing in his backyard and then he drones up and around his neighborhood he sees he's connecting like um, hearts are popping up animated hearts of like people that are coming to him to list and sell their house. And guess what? He texts me and messages me. I have just got people coming out of the woodwork, just out of the blue people from years ago. Uh, you know, you sold my house 10 years ago. It's not hard. We make it hard by getting in the way. So I'm curious, what did you get for yourself? What did you hear today about being the creator of your re reality? and uh, not operating from your ego. Do you like the idea of the cosmic kitchen? Are you now gonna become super conscious of the quality of your thoughts, words, and actions? Are you gonna focus on what you need to do or are you gonna imagine and act as if that which you desire already exists and your only, only, only responsibility is to elevate your frequency to be an energetic match for your dreams. If it's not coming, you're not a match. Does that make sense? Uh, be willing to receive. Ah, oh, yes, that's my favorite too. If there's really anything that I want you to take out of this session today, it's that you are a freaking miracle on earth. There is a one in 14 trillion chance of you actually being here. You are the predominant creative force in your own reality. But you, like me, many times get stuck in your ego, addicted to getting it right, needing to know, and you shrink your potential to manifest miracles on earth. You must relate to yourself as worthy, as deserving. You must give yourself permission and you must declare that you are willing to receive. If you're not willing to receive, you're going to keep ordering and the kitchen's closed. There's nothing that's going to happen. Love the cosmic kitchen and the current relationship to what I want. Thank you. You're really welcome. I hope that was of service, my friends. Now, if you want more information about how to become the master creator of your own reality, if you want to become masterful at ordering it from the cosmic kitchen, uh, DM me uh, or book yourself in a complimentary 30 minute discovery session. It's absolutely free valued at 250 bucks. And let's look at what is the dialogue that's getting in the way of you sabotaging your dreams. Get a PK <clears throat> and, and let's get you tuned into the creator orientation. I'm going to be doing uh, videos of this kind of training in um, the next couple of months uh, because one thing I'm really passionate about is that we embody the creative force that was our natural birthright and we stopped acting in our limited beliefs of our ego, overcompensating and seeking validation because we believe we're not good enough. To me, this is the this is the real journey of being human. G'day, Stephen. Beautiful to have you here, my friend. Please remember, you are the creator of your reality. Every single thought you have and word you speak is a docket go is an ordering from the menu of life. It's a docket going up to that cosmic kitchen. The chefs don't know what you're allergic to. The chefs just cook up what you're asking for. You're either asking for that which you desire and being grateful for what's being plated up for you, or you're asking for that which you don't want and you're wondering why you're in a famine. So I want you to feast. I want you to feast on your dreams and I want you to love this life because, friends, it goes like that. What are you waiting for? Also, if you are on here and you don't know what you love, start asking your heart before you go to sleep at night when our subconscious mind is really open. Here's what you can say to yourself. Subconscious mind, I'm going to have an amazing sleep right now. I'm going to restore my body and I'm going to get, let all the cells do their business and my, my organs flush everything out from the day and I'm going to heal beautifully. And here's what I need you to work on while I'm asleep. I need you to reveal to me tomorrow some insight into what lights me up because I've forgotten. I've forgotten what makes me happy and what I love. I need you to reveal it to me in a way that is obvious and that I know it's you. I cannot tell you how many times I have done that and I have been beautifully blessed the next day 
Please don't underestimate your ability to manifest that which you desire. I really hope today has been beneficial. Totally willing to receive. Thank you so much. Yay. Greg, you made it. I thought you were taking care of some stuff. Hey, Greg, great to have you here. Watch the record. It's a long one today. I'm going for 44 minutes. It's a double whammy. It's the extended mix. Please type in. Hey, Kelly, I love that you love that. I'd love to hear from you. What'd you get? Top lesson. Please type it in. I love some feedback. Otherwise, I feel like I'm talking to the ether, which is fine too, right? What did you get from today's session? What was the biggest lesson? And was it open to receive? Are you giving yourself permission? Uh, are you ordering from the cosmic kitchen? Are you going to practice parking your farm and elevating your intuitive intelligence? Are you going to do the hula hoop exercise of standing in your vision and imagining in its full glory and then stepping out and standing in your ego and your current relationship with this vision and then standing in the bridge, imagining the vision fulfilled and looking out at the island of your current reality going, what action did I take? What's the bridge? And trust what you get it may be random but that is the path of least resistance we don't know it just shows up uh greg good morning came to watch it back but you're still here i know that's commitment my friend that is commitment uh, all of the above is what the holistic home got amy says be calm and get around the ego that will sabotage you here's the deal well said amy the ego is always there people say to me how do i get rid of my ego that's like this where attention goes, energy flows. We have things in our heart that we want, but often we focus on as what we don't want. And if my focus is on how do I get rid of this or I've got to do this, I've got to do this before I can have what I want, where's my focus? Stop worrying about what you don't want and start sending your focus and your energy on what you do want and then act as if, have an attitude of gratitude that it's already here. Speaking of here, thanks for being here. Thanks for sharing 44, 45 minutes of your life, your precious life, your precious time with me. I love you. This is my purpose, is to share insights that I've learned and studied over my years that have given me access to manifest things that I really love. And I am also a consistent, a perfectly imperfect, consistent work in progress. I'm just like you, figuring, figuring, figuring it out along the way. Um, yes, remind yourself that you're worthy. You are very, very welcome. Um, Yes, as I said before, Amy's saying be calm, have faith, because you got to have faith, the faith, the faith. Uh, have a beautiful birthday, Andrew and Michael, if you're still here. Let go of ego. Yeah, don't even let go of the ego. The ego is going to be there. If you are letting it go, you're holding onto it in the first place. So, Melissa, here's what I invite you to do. Hold on to your heart. Focus on your heart. Your heart is where your soul resides, your heart is where your creator resides, your imagination is the landscape of your heart. Start getting interested in what is in there. I also do do, um, I've mentioned this before, an unbelievable session. It goes, it's a double session process. It's called the Land of Plenty. It's a Native American ancient shamanic visioning technique. Sounds fancy. Essentially, it's a meditation I take you through where you literally walk through your heartscape. You walk through and you get all the key themes of the life that you love. And I also tune in and download something I don't share. I haven't shared publicly. Before real estate, I had my own practice as a clairvoyant, clairsentient, clairaudient, and as a coach. So what does that mean? Clear seeing, clear feeling, clear hearing. And it's not fortune telling stuff. It's I sit in your space. I sit with you and I get downloads from your higher self around what it is that you really desire. And I reflect it to you because you've forgotten just like me sometimes. Hey, Ray White, Double Bay, great to have you here. Taylor, great to have you here as well. So if that speaks to you, DM me and let's hook up a session. I love you. I love you for just joining. Perhaps watch the video. If you got value out of this and you know someone else in your life, we'll tag them, share it with them. It's free. I just show up giving you what I can to give you access to live a life you love. So please write in the comments if you watch the recording what you got out of it. Michael and Andrew, happy birthday. Anyone else that's having a birthday that I don't know, happy birthday you you know what happy life to us all right happy life to us all i'll be back eight o'clock eastern standard time uh 8 a.m that is on friday for rapid fire friday where i reflect on the co top coaching themes for the week and rapid fire tips to help you live that life that you absolutely love and as always signing off with the words of the late great maya angelou remember people will forget what you said 
people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Please be selfish today, not self-absorbed. There's a big difference. Be selfish and ask yourself, what can I do to make myself feel great today? What would I love? And do that meditation and go for it. If you need a hand, let me know. I'm here for you. Go and be of service. Happy long weekend for those in Australia. Emily, hi. Thanks for tuning in. We're just wrapping up. So watch the record, my love. I love you. Take care and enjoy. Saving on Instagram so we can post it and ending the live on Facebook. Mwah. Thanks. Thanks, peeps. I love you too.